I'm going to do some random pulls for Mahjong competition rules to practice identifying scoring elements in a drawn hand. If you're new to this game, download this quick reference. Look below the video for a link. If you're new to Mahjong or if you already know how to play and just want to build your skills, consider subscribing to my channel. That way you won't miss anything. We're going to do four random pulls, one for each wind of the round, starting with east round. We're going to alternate seats by a roll of the dice. Seat one, two, three, or four. Those variables can come into play with decision making. East round. I rolled an 11, 8, 9, 10, 11. So that means that west is our seat. West seat, east round, and we are non-dealer, so I'm gonna get 13 tiles. We've got a lot of BAMs. Look at all those BAMs, including a Pung. A Pung is three of a kind. We could even break that up and use this potentially as a chow. One, two, three. Use that as a potential pung. Use this as a potential chow. And then we have single honors and a flower. Let's get an exchange. Another dragon. Singles. I think for this set of tiles, I would try for a half flesh. Discard these first. A half flesh is number 50, four pungs or chows and a pair in one suit with any combination of honors. That's six fawn. So we need two fawn somewhere else. Now what we could do is pair up any one of these for a pung. Any seat wind or wind of the round, which is also called prevalent or prevailing wind since it's the east round we have a single east if we pair that up and pung that's going to be too fun the prevalent or seat wind that's numbers 60 and 61 and those are too fun each if we can do it any pung of dragons too fun so if we can pair up any one of these we can get our too fun there so i would plan to hold every bam and pair up these honors and pung. Chow, pung, chow, pair up and pung. That's how I would play this one. Okay, let's go to the next one. We're on south round. I rolled a seven, so that would be west again. So when we're in west seat and it is the south round. So I'll get 13 tiles. No flowers this time. And we have one pair, all the rest are singles. So I think we need to plan out something with all these number tiles. I think the first thing I would do is discard the West. That right there would give us no honors. No honors is one fawn, that's number 76. So. The next thing that I notice here is we have no ones and nines. No ones and nines, that is called all simples. Simples are numbers two through eight. 
So if we stick with all simples, that in and of itself means no honors. So you cannot count both no honors and all simples because all simples is part of no honors just by nature of the element. So all simples, that's too fawn, too fawn. Now we need to come up with another one. I do see a lot of three, five, three, five, three, five. So what about if we keep all the little numbers lower? Let's see here. Hmm. I was thinking lower four, number 37. That's tiles one through four, but we'd have to get rid of three fives. I think we could maybe do mixed triple chow. Mixed triple chow is number 41, and that is eight fawn. If we do all simples in mixed triple chow with three, four, five, that would be 10 fawn. So we would need to chow three, four, five in dots, chow three, four, five in bams, and three, four, five in cracks. So that's one, two, three blocks. All we need to do is chow three, four, five in each suit, then chow one of these and get a pair. And that would be all simples and mixed triple chow. And that would meet the eight fawn minimum. I think that's how I would play this one. We do happen to have a seven, seven, eight, eight, but I think three, five is much stronger. Okay, so let's go on to the next one. That was for South Round. We're now gonna do a random pull for West Round. Let's see if we can be in a different seat. I rolled a six. Two, four, six would be seat two, south. Okay, I went a long way around to organize those tiles. Here, we have mixed suits, two dots, four cracks, seven bams. I think I would try for mixed triple chow again. We already have what's called a pure double chow right here. One, two, three. Three sequential pairs is actually two chows. Pure double chow, same chow, same suit. So there would be pure double chow. There's a chow, one, two, three. Here's a potential chow. We need a three dot. All we need in here is a pair. This is, this is one tile away from a winning hand. We need a chow here, so that's one block. Here's two. Here's three, and here's four. All we need is to pair one of these up, and we would have mixed triple chow and pure double chow. So mixed triple chow, again, is number 41. That's eight fawn. And then pure double chow is number 69. That's one fawn. So that would be nine fawn. The other thing I was thinking If we swap these out for ones or nines and pair up, we could do outside hand in addition to mixed triple chow and pure double chow. Outside hand is number 55, and that is where you have terminals, which are ones and nines, or honors in any block, every block. So even if we could get a wind or a dragon pair, that would also be term uh, outside hand. And that would be f an additional four Han. 
So I think that I would take a ready hand if I paired up one of these, but if I happened to draw a winter dragon or a one or a nine, I'd probably swap those out and try to do outside hand, mix triple chow and pure double chow. That would be a really nice scoring hand. Eight, four, and one. So that's, that's decent, 13 points. I'd take it. The other thing that there, there's another element in here, I believe called pure shifted pungs. Pure shifted pungs is number 24. Now this is 24 fawn. Pure shifted pungs is number 24. Three pungs or kongs in one suit, each shifted one up from the last. So if we punged these three, that would be pure shifted pungs and that's 24 fawn. So that though would mean we could potentially discard these regardless, see if we could do pure shifted pungs. If not, fall back on mixed triple chow and see if we could pair up. So really, the mixed shifted punks would be a much higher scoring element, 24 fawn. But there are only four of every tile and we have pairs. There are three other players. We just don't know if they're gonna use the one, two, three and if we could wait on them I don't know. I think I would just have to play it turn by turn and see which comes in. I think because mixed triple chow is one away from a ready hand with this, all we need is a three dot and a pair. That might be the way to go for a quick win. Would you delay? Mixed triple chow for pure shifted pungs, 24 fun. Or would you go for a quick win? I think it's a play by play decision, but the potential is there for pure shifted pungs. That would be fun to play out. We'll go on to North round. I rolled a six, we're south. Let's get a replacement for this. Singles. Okay. We have two, three, six, three dots, two, three, six, seven, bams, six, seven, nine, cracks, six, seven, eight, mixed triple chow, again with the chows, mixed triple chow. We also have a two, three and a two, three. One, two, three, four, five. We have plenty of chow opportunity. All we really need here is a pair. Mix triple chow. Of course, we need a seven dot. This is a little light. We need a seven dot, five dot or eight dot. So the nice thing about this situation is we have side weights because we could either go with a five or an eight here and a five or an eight. We'd have to decide with the first one and then follow suit with the other two. So 
we would need five, six, seven, or six, seven, eight with these three. The other thing I was thinking, if we draw in a pair of simples, two through eight, we could get rid of all four of those and do all simples and mix triple chow again. All we need in here is a pair. We can build this up and then chow and pair up. I think that's what I would probably do here. Discard these first, hold this to see if we pair up. And then discard these first. As singles, they're not gonna be helpful. And we have a lot more flexibility with number tiles. So that's how I would do this one. If you would do something different with this one, write it in the comment section below. I think this exercise is a great way to practice finding scoring elements in your drawn hand. I was focused on mixed triple chow, and then I saw pure double chow. Then I noticed that those were sequential pairs. Any pair is a potential pung, which led me to look into the pung category, and I saw pure shifted pungs. This practice can train your mind to see those opportunities. If you have a set at home, I hope you give it a try. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, consider subscribing. Click that little gray bell if you do, that way you'll get notification for when I post new videos and you won't miss an opportunity to learn a new strategy or pick up an insight to the game that could give you an advantage at the table between now and the next set of random pulls. For Mahjong competition rules, may all your picks be keepers.